What's up guys, my name is ESO and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to find the Sky Crown Mace, which is a ice enchanted weapon. It's extremely powerful, in fact, it can be the best one-handed mace in the entire game. And I've got a build that prove it, proves how effective it really is. And then I'm also going to be showing you how to find the Red Lady's Dagger, which is the coolest looking weapon. As you can see, it's kind of like got a, f like a face on the top of the dagger there and like a four pronged pokey point at the end and it's actually modeled after this dungeon here that you get it from so you get both of these weapons in the same place they're super easy to get i would say as long as you are well prepared for what you're going to find within which is why i make these walkthrough videos for you now so you guys know if it's worth your time guessing these or not Firstly, we have the Sky Crown Mace. It has a physical damage of 12 and a frost damage of 35, which is the highest frost damage of any weapon in the entire game. It also has an attack speed of 1.1, which is the fastest attack speed you can get. You can also buff that even further. Not to mention it has an impact of 50, which means if you buff its attack speed, you will be staggering every single foe in your sight. Next, we're going to be getting the Red Lady's Dagger, a damage of 20, and a fire damage of 20 as well. It also has an impact of 49, which I believe is one of the higher ones for any dagger. And considering you can just use the slash attack, it's actually quite a fast way of staggering enemies if you're using like a heavy weapon in one hand and a dagger in the other. Its durability is 300 as well. And I do believe this weapon will inflict burn damage. It's arguably the best dagger in the game, Though it's not the best dagger if you're planning on assassinating people. Though there are definitely some situations where there is a better dagger called the Manticore Dagger. But most of the time the Red Lady's Dagger is going to do the job just fine. And the elemental damage also ignores your enemy's armor. So you've got that going for it as well. So now guys I will show you where to get these two awesome looking weapons. And please if you haven't already guys go ahead and subscribe. I've got loads of other builds and weapon walkthroughs on their way. So from the starter area guys, the first thing we need to do is travel on the bottom right here to the Enmerka Forest, which is located where this arrow is just here. Once you arrive in the Enmerka Forest, you arrive from the top left arrow, and then you're gonna want to come down this pathway past the abandoned docks, the city of Berg. And then if you leave the east gates just here cross the bridge and then go north you'll find the face of the ancient which is the dungeon i'm going to be showing you guys so this is the city of berg i'm going to run over to the face of the ancients which is just around the corner here not very far away at all in fact i think there's a campsite on the left somewhere you can uh, grab some supplies from there's a hollowed log just here with some fire stones very good uh they're going to be really useful actually if you have any fire rags or fire stones and whatnot Make sure you bring those along with you. Ah, uh, there's three bandits here, guys. So we're just going to quickly take these guys out. Let's use the frost boon. Are you ready for some rampaging action? Get wrecked. Get wrecked. Well, that, that was very easy. If you want this build guide, by the way, guys, check out the link in the description. It will explain how to get it. Um, it's very easy to do, and we're actually getting one of the items required for this build right now. The Sky Crow Mace. So this is the face of the Ancients. You can see it on the map at the top right just here, near the entrance to the Hallowed Marsh. And you can see the hands on the uh, coming out of the mountainside there. This is where we need to go, my friends, in order to get the best mace weapon in the game, and arguably the best dagger as well. So here we are inside the dungeon and we're going to need to kill a Wendigo to get the Skycrow Mace and then we're going to like solve a little puzzle to get the uh, dagger. So this man here, he's worth talking to, he's quite interesting, the researcher. What now? You there, you look like a capable explorer. Might I hire you for something? I've heard of a blood red idol hidden in this place. I'll pay you 100 silver if you bring it to me. Okay, I'll keep an eye out for it. Off with you. Be careful down there. This place is crawling with burning men, and I'm positive I saw a Wendigo. Tracks a little further in. Well, the Wendigo is what we need to kill to get the mace, but you don't want to give this guy the idol. We actually need the idol to solve the puzzle first. I'm using um, Brand, by the way. It's a ice weapon. I'll leave another guide in the description if you guys want to 
know where to find it. It's an awesomely powerful weapon. But um, let's go down the rope here, which is going to lead us into the dungeon. And here we can see some burning enemies. I'm going to be using um, ice varnish. You guys can use some kind of frost varnish as well if you want to empower your attacks against these creatures. Oh, oh, he's already he's already trying to set me on fire, guys. And look, I just absolutely wreck them. There's nothing they can do versus me. They also drop thick oil, and we're going to need those fire um, sheets later. So, um, you know, you do want to bring those with you anyway, despite there being burning men down here. But anyway, just to direct you guys, from the ladder we just came down into, we're going to want to go left here, on the first left. Then you're going to find a few more burning men, which are already killed. Uh, and we're going to go straight on down this path here through this door here and then you're going to find look down there that is where we need to go to solve the puzzle that mysterious statue but i just want to just show you guys this location because if you're using my bow build or you've got some kind of ranged attack then it's actually a really good location to take out the enemies in that boss room because otherwise it's quite difficult. I'm going to do it with this build anyway because it's super powerful and super effective against fire enemies. But I suggest following my bleed build if, you, um, you know, if you're struggling um, and shoot them before you actually go down there. But now we're going to come back into this room and we're going to go straight on here and continue on down the corridor. A knight's corpse. He has an antidote and two astral potions, which I'll need to refill my mana later. So I'm going to take those. Uh, and also he's got some food, which is always good to, you know, have ticking along. So let's go back down this way. I'm going to be like giving you like a rough sort of guide through the whole dungeon. So, you know, um, don't worry if, you, if you're worried about missing anything. So um, again, that's the ladder over there. This time we're going to go straight on this way. These blood mushrooms you can use to um, gather food. I mean, make health potions. So uh, make sure you pick up those if you need health potions. So we can see there's actually a palladium ore vein just here. Um, I don't have my pickaxe with me because I'm a noob and I'm just doing this as a tutorial. But um, I can see an enemy down there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the cool potion to increase my frost damage. But um, brand this unique weapon here. Um, actually already does frost damage anyway, so I don't need to use an ice varnish potion on this guy. He's going to be pretty easy to kill. Now, um, yeah, you don't want you want to avoid that fire spell, otherwise it set you alight, as I you can see right now. Finish him off quickly, and then just find your water skin. And then just use the water skin, and that's going to get rid of that fire damage pretty rapidly in fact i would almost hot bar your water skin if you find they're killing you quite often otherwise you're gonna have a bad time obviously my character's also using the cool boon so uh, he's gonna have a bit of resistance to fire as well i could also use the fire boon as well to give myself even more fire resistance um and we're just gonna keep heading deeper and deeper into this cave it's is a relatively linear route so you can't really get lost but um, there's a turning here. One is going to lead you to that gateway full of ice. The other one is going to... That's going to lead you to the boss room I showed you guys from the top earlier. So I recommend just eating some food and whatnot to refill your health um, before we go ahead here. And then we're going to go down this way where you can see the gate with ice behind it. Now the next thing we need to do is open that gate because that's where the boss is. So we're going to go left before we reach the gate. And uh, you're going to come up against some ice enemies shortly. We go left again down here. and go down deeper into the dungeon. It's a bit maze-like down here, but um, just keep going down, basically. And you're going to find a chest. A prayer claymore. 32 damage, 33 impact, 1.1 attack speed. One of the faster claymores in the game. Definitely not the best, though. There's um, some better ones out there, but this one has a very fast attack speed, considering. Um, I'm not going to bother losing that chest, though, because, I mean, I'm pretty full already. On so this time, we're going to go right out of this chest area, and then we're going to go upwards. And you can see... Oh, God, that's the Wendigo we need to kill, actually. 
Bloody hell, I didn't know he was stalking around me. Right, let's try and enrage here before he attacks us. This isn't actually ideal. We need to kind of get away from him right now. And I want to imbue my weapon with fire before we battle him. Seems that we triggered him because he heard us making a noise though. So let's quickly try and buff our guy up here with the fire rag we want to use. You can also use fire varnish. Actually, that's stronger if you have it. I'm also going to use an assassin's potion here. Um, and now I can go back and kill him. I don't know where he's run off to, to be honest with you. We'll find him somewhere. He stalks these halls. You can also use poison as well to kill the Wendigo. That's probably the easiest way to kill him. Here he is, here he is. Okay, great, great, great. Boom. I'm using my move here to inflict extreme bleeding on him. And then I'm going to stagger him there. And we're just going to want to block and kind of wait it out now. If I can get my rage boon off again by drinking a potion, I will. But um, it's not really a priority. As you can see, that extreme bleeding damage on that skill I just used. You can check out my build if you want to know how to do that. Um, we'll literally just finish him off right now. There we go, he's dead. So there, that's the boss we basically want to kill. The first cannibal. And this is a Wendigo. Um, the legend behind Wendigo is, if you didn't know, it's an interesting one. It started from a folk tale of... Um, apparently there were some people who went camping together. They, they almost died in the frost and they had to eat each other to stay alive. So this guy ate both of his friends and lived and... It turned him into this horrible, creepy cro monster creature that now stalks the forest and hunts on other humans, a cannibal. And as you can see, he has the Sky Crown Mace. He also has a Cold Stone. Ocalot remains, uh, very useful, by the way, for crafting horror weapons, so take those with you. A small sapphire for selling things. And the Cryptia Tomb Key, a small key that unlocks certain doors. We need to take that with us as well. But um, now we have the Sky Crown Mace on this build. It's actually really, really effective. So I'm going to swap um, brand for that instead. Okay, so we're, we're back where the chest is just down there. And now we can go up to the left here. Now, your Wendigo is like walking around this area. But usually he doesn't get like triggered. So I was kind of like taken unawares then and uh, caught a bit off guard. But as you can see, this door is now open. Oh, the, the Wendigo actually looted the ghost. I mean, killed the ghost for us. But if you are struggling with the ghost, I recommend taking some spiritual varnish with you. Basically, um, it gives you elemental damage to your weapon. But the Wendigo you usually find in this room um, just here. So, you know, sorry it was a bit confusing for everyone. And you can see uh, this is a dead adventurer. Maybe the Wendigo was hunting people and bringing them back to this cave. And now, um, you know, we can open this door, which, which we open with using the key that we found on the Wendigo's corpse. Uh, so clearly the adventurers had come down here initially. Maybe this was one of his friends trying to survive down here. Um, he's got some food, though, which is very useful. And this is the uh, reason we came here, the Scarlet Lich's Idol. So we need to grab that. And you can also light a campfire if you're cold. I don't actually have a flint and steel on me, though. Re. And also, at the end of this area, you'll find an ornate chest. A living wood axe, really good if you're playing a mage, minus 10% mana cost. Some armor. Um... Hack Manatite, yeah, some other really good stuff that you can loot. My bag is pretty much full at this point, though, so I'm, I'm just going to call it quits. All right, let's head into this cave now. We're going to exit out of this entrance. Which, as you guys can see, just so you know, we basically went round a full circle to open the door that was already open, and then we can open this using the key, but initially... But you basically had to go all the way around to open this door. But this was the door that was closed earlier, if that makes sense, that we uh, saw previous. Oh, sh I've already got spin spiritual and varnish on my mace. So um, we should be able to take this guy out pretty easily. As you can see. Get wrecked, son. 
I just used the Rage Boon on him because I knew it would immediately kill him. But they are quite powerful, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and drink a health potion now. Let's drink some tea so we can get some stamina regeneration going. And uh, just so you know, guys, if you follow that path there, you will find another standard chest. Uh, I'm not going to bother showing you where it is, but everything's a dead end apart from where the chest is. So it's a relatively simple path to follow. But now, from the gate we just came out of, we're going to go back the way we came. Um, so, you know, this is the area we started out in, basically. And on the right, once again, we have that shrine that I showed you previously. Now, I'm going to attempt this because I think this build is probably powerful enough. But this, this area is really difficult up ahead. So, I recommend laying some traps down here so you can, like, run back. But one, one good idea, if you are struggling with this area, get the Wendigo aggro him and then run down the corridor into this shrine area and then he will like actually almost kill most of the enemies there and it will just make your life so much easier so then you can just finish off whoever's surviving right i'm gonna drop my bag here because i want to be a bit more agile for this fight and we're gonna head on in i buff my character up just now um and here we go guys this is gonna be difficult so let's try and get everyone together if we can Oh man, this build just does too much damage. Watch out for their heat-seeking missiles. I don't... Oh wait, are they not attacking me? Or are they attacking me? I'm really confused. Oh, okay, he is, he is. That was weird. I thought maybe because I have the idol, get wrecked, son, uh, that they wouldn't attack me. But they are they are really difficult to kill. Let me just grab my bag quickly so we can actually see. All right, now we've got a lantern again. This is the shrine. Look at this place. It's absolutely incredible. It's a really cool location. Uh, but these guys drop obsidian and firestones as well. And there's usually some burning men here, but I don't know why they're dead. Very strange. There should be a few of those running around as well. But basically, guys, we're going to put the idol just here um, on this pedestal. If we interact with her. I thank you, mortal, for returning my likeness to its rightful place. My children will once more hear my voice with a thunderous clarity. In return, I grant you this dagger. May it be your shining moon in the nights to come. And as you can see, the dagger appears behind us there. The Red Lady's Dagger. A unique artifact. Just here. Red Lady's Dagger. Damage, 20. Fire damage, 20. Also burns the targets as well. An ancient artifact of the Scarlet Lady. This offhand weapon requires the dagger skill to be used. And it is arguably the best dagger in the game, as I said at the start of the video. Um, so here's the idol. Don't know why she says this is her likeness, but it's her idol. Big fan. This really is a very unique location. So we're now pretty much done with this whole dungeon and we can just head outside. Uh, we've got everything we needed to. You can obviously grab the extra chest if you haven't already. Um, but we've completely cleared the whole dungeon. So uh, well done, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did... Please check out my build guide using the Skycrow Mace. Um, see what you think of it. It's super powerful. Um, I recommend using it. It's like absolutely incredible. It's pretty pr almost to the point of broken, to be honest. And obviously, we're not going to give this this merchant at the top um, our, our idol because we... What now? We can say, I scoured the place and I couldn't find it. I think it's long gone from here. Listen up. Are you sure, huh? I think I'll go and check for myself. If you scour the place like you claim, there shouldn't be too many dangerous beasts left in here. Alright, thanks for your help. I'll go get it from here. Farewell, stranger. So, this guy is definitely going to die once he removes that from the pedestal, I would have thought. But a uh, really cool location, I actually really like this dungeon. And if you guys are looking for a build that uses daggers really effectively, I'm going to be making a build on that and I'll link it down below, including the other one as well, which I believe will be out tomorrow as soon as I finished it. But um, thanks very much for watching, guys. Subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more outward content. I've got lots more stuff coming out and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day and goodbye.